what do you say we get going with some character creation? If any of you do want to pop the boxes that I have left, I have two Tyranny of Dragons, uh, some Dragon Heist and Monster Menagerie left. Let me know. Chaotic says maybe you shouldn't listen to me because I'm very tired. Oh, in, uh, in reference to Derek? Yeah, hopefully it'll get to you, DMs. We will begin. Uh, we'll make this character, and then Ivalon uh, earlier brought up a good point in that we can add even more details to our character uh, by using um, by using a sec uh, another section in Xanathar's Guide to Everything to flesh out our character even more. Yeah, go ahead and consider it, Derek. I, I don't want you to, to you know ruin your budget, man. I may eat a lot of spicy ramen, but I don't want to force anyone to have to eat ramen, if you get what I'm saying. Ooh, hiccup, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, let's roll. Do we have a female character, a male character, or a multi-class character with a re-roll? 41. We have our... Oh, actually, so we have a female character, but I forgot... We have a we have two different types of character sheets we're using uh, for this caster and non caster. So I'm gonna roll a d12 also and find out which sheet we're gonna be using. Four. A druid. We're gonna be making a caster. A female. Female. Druid. Who is of the race? Number six, a gnome. Our short stack party continues. And which kind of gnome? Odd. A rock gnome. Diadems, go down in flames with me when the bill comes due. Hey, yeah, so you two can just, like, kind of drive and meet up or something, and then just, like, hang on to each other as the world ends. <laughs> Team fun size. That's right, Derek. <laughs> Gnomi. It's a Gnomi. All right. What is her alignment going to be? Two percentiles will tell us. Not chaotic evil, but yet another evil party member. Um, a neutral evil party member. By the way, rock gnomes are small. I'm feeling bad for this bard. What kind of help did he get? <laughs> All right. What level are we going to generate her? 96. This is a level 20 druid. That means we get five, up to five ability uh, score improvements, ASIs. So I'm going to roll a percentile and we'll find out how many we, we replace with feats. SM all. SM all. With a 34, she's all stats, baby. All day, or a day. Now, her background is... Four, an entertainer or gladiator. <laughs> we already determined she's a druid, but I'm going to roll the d12 and we're going to find out, is she the casty druid or the shape changey druid? Those are the official terms. Uh, Swifty, how long... How wait, how can walking go from 30 to 40 on D&D Beyond? Uh, barbarians at level 6, I think, give you an extra... 5 or 6 give you an extra 10 feet of movement. Monks uh, will give you extra movement. Uh, and there's a feat that you can take. Uh, I think it's called Swift. And uh, that feat can also give you an extra 10 feet of movement. Uh, D12 was a 
10. So that is even. And for druids, that is going to be a circle of the moon. Next up, we have our gnome height starts at 2 feet 11 inches. We're going to add 2d4 inches to her height. 7. So she is uh, 3 feet 6 inches tall. We're going to take that same 7, multiply it by 1, and add it to 35 because that's her base weight. So she weighs 42 pounds. And as, well, she's a level 20 druid. Age is kind of an awkward thing right now. Um, but l let's see how old she is or was before druid stuff happened. That that's an official term also, druid stuff. At eight, she is a young adult, almost a child prodigy. Wouldn't have that been something, huh? A young adult. And for gnomes... That means she's between 41 and 120 years old. So that's an 80-sided die. Fifty-seven. Alright, so she is going to be 97 years old. She's a young adult. Okay, we will not need the random number generator anymore. So, Arivari. I know I mispronounced that, Santa. I'm, I, I hope I didn't make you cringe too hard. Let's come down here to our personality traits. We are a gladiator or an entertainer. Oh, that, that gives us, actually... Uh, 3d6, or not 3d6, three different types of routines. All right, so she's really good at one particular routine, and that routine is a tumbler. <laughs> and some spells can do it, too. But, I, yeah, I mean, that's obviously not a permanent solution. I'm sure there's probably a potion that can do the same thing. <laughs> Boots. Magic items. All right, background feature. By popular demand. You can always find a place to perform, usually in an inn or tavern, but possibly with a circus, at a theater, or even a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of a modest and comfortable standard. Uh, as long as you perform each night. In addition, your performance makes you something of a local figure. When strangers recognize you in town where you have performed, they typically take a liking to you. Now, if we want to make her a gladiator, which we I think we can easily do, uh, is as much an entertainer as any minstrel um, trained to make the arts of combat into a spectacle the crowd can enjoy. This kind of flashy combat is your entertainer routine, though you might also have some skills as a tumbler or actor. Hey, yeah. Uh, using your by popular demand feature, you can find a place to perform that features combat for entertainment. Massatrim, welcome! And if, uh, Massatrim, if you want to find the, the version of the character sheet we're using here, you can type in exclamation point Charvar for character variant. C-H-A-R-V-A-R. Uh, Diadems, uh, get some EXP, uh, if a, a mod could, uh, could assist our, our dear Mr. Diadems. You're very welcome, Ma Massa Trim. Thank you for, uh, for being a part of us and, uh, finding us and, and lurking as we're doing this character generation. I hope you're enjoying it and it's, and, and uh... As we're making this character together, you can conceptualize her in your head as we're telling her story through complete random number generation. Or at least mostly. Thank you, Derek. 
Zuler Prime, I'm trying to donate 20 due to Streamlabs interface this will take okay well zuler pie uh when it comes through it will will resolve it man <laughs> there you go dms we we love you so much enjoy <laughs> All right, now, let's discover her personality. Right? 2d8. 4 and 3. Then we're going to roll 3d6 for the other portions. 3, 1, 1. Let's take a look at what this means for her. How does she carry herself? What, what does she believe in? What are her thoughts? Uh, it's an unfortunate placement right behind me here. I'll narrate it to you and type it out so you can see. Let's just say it was a boss tree and pair. Hey, that works. That works, Evalon. <laughs> All right, number four. Nobody stays angry at me or around me for long since I can diffuse any amount of tension. And number three. I'm a hopeless romantic, always searching for that special someone. So, uh, she's she carries herself right. She's neutral evil, right? So she tends to be very sel uh, very selfish. Um, she could be very narcissistic. Maybe she's very vain. Um. And, and so she carries herself with this opinion that everyone loves her. Uh, it seems like, you know, she's she's kind of a princess. Um, she's a hopeless romantic. Um, and, and so she, uh, she's more of a selfish person. You know, maybe people are just, uh, you know, notches on the bedpost to her. I mean, to keep it PG-13. Maybe, uh, maybe she seeks to conquer different people in a relationship. Um, you know, as she travels and performs. Um, you know, she might have a lover in every city kind of a thing. All right. Her ideals. Number three. Creativity. The world is in need of new ideas and bold action. Ooh, she's, she's carrying herself a bit like a, a diva, isn't she? Her bond is number one. My instrument is my most treasured possession, and it reminds me of someone I love. Ooh. Someone she loves, but maybe doesn't love her back. And maybe then, as she is performing, you know, she wants this person she can't have. And so she kind of inadvertently takes it out on other people by, you know, courting them for a while. She's a hopeless nomantic. Oh my gosh. Can Ivalon, can you give Chaotic Blue like 100 experience points for that, please? <laughs> and her flaw is number one. I'll do anything to win fame and renown. That's quite ambitious, and anything is quite broad, especially when you put your self-interest first. And you know, actually, you know what I'm thinking? What if? Keeping it PG-13 and in the context of a... We're talking about a story and a character. She's an entertainer or a gladiator, right? Her expertise is in tumbling. What if tumbling is maybe a bit more of a metaphor and we've actually created a a courtesan wink a uh, a specialty service provider that lives in water deep Do you think that could work for her? She's very she seems to be very vain, right? 
she wants to be the best. She's she's you know kind of a power broker uh, behind closed doors, um, that kind of a thing. Does does that work for you all? Again, let, let's if we're subjecting ourselves to randomness, let's take a look at everything that we have. Wouldn't that be something? So I mean, Tumblr is is Tumblr in this case, right? Quote unquote. I think it might work, but I don't know about the bond then, says Evalon. My instrument is my most treasured possession, and it reminds me of someone I love. What if, uh, what if she was given a gift by uh, someone that, uh, maybe before she started this profession, uh, someone gave her... Uh, now, an instrument can be an instrument, or it could be some sort of a favor, a token or a favor as well. Um, heck, maybe she can't even play it. I don't know. Um, but she was given something uh, by a uh, by uh, someone that she she loves, but maybe it's an unrequited love. Hey, coffee cat. Hello. Someone who scorned her, and you know, I I mean, a gold digger. I I guess we could say, but she's not necessarily manipulating people. She's doing this in a professional capacity. So, you know, so she's an, she will she will be an escort. She will be a courtesan. She will um selectively entertain clients with a little bit of tumbling. Xcat says me and Killer did some play testing on the Null Warrior before I went for my walk and Null Warrior is now in a playable state. Well, yeah, if you want to post it up in uh, in the workshop uh, Xcat, maybe we can take a look at it later. Ilan, uh, oh, so like maybe they, someone who uh, paid, yeah, yeah. Although maybe this was a gift, like someone gave her this, and she loved it, and and but they could never really be together, and so she's tried to fill the hole in her heart by getting payments and and whatnot for her services. I'm thinking the evil though, how to work that in. Well, remember, uh, evil people tend to be more selfish than not. And so, uh, she would be willing to, uh, so, I don't know, let's say that she entertains a noble. She'll ask that noble a lot of questions. Maybe she could even be an information broker on the side. Or, or maybe she just wants to build a power network by, uh, you know, the nobles, the nobles who, um, tumble with her, um... You know, she knows that she could blackmail him. Maybe even the nobles know that, but there's some sort of an arrangement. And so she has this inadvertent kind of behind-the-scenes power over people who have enjoyed her particular brand of services. And so she's evil in that regard because she's willing to... Uh, she is willing to uh, put people in jeopardy, to blackmail them. Uh, she's willing to be this little ball of righteous fury if someone scorns her. You thought of it backwards? That she was in this life and then one day one of her customers gives her the gift and she loves him but he's married or something. So it can never be. I mean, it seems like something like she had that one first true love. Or, you know, uh, something happened and she, she got into this whirlwind. And that's what opened her up to the rest of her life uh, performing this profession. But that one time it was different. Because it was pure. Because it meant something. Even though... It could never be. It's unrequited. DM says, I like that, Ivalon. All right, Xcat. Thank you for providing that on our Discord. I'm too pure for your stories. A chaotic blue that says, uh, well, <laughs> I'd like to think that I, I, can, I can entertain other ideas. Uh, I just got to make sure... I don't even mind getting into adult territory on the channel. I mean, as much as I'm like, come on, PG-13, everyone. If it's in the context of the story and we're keeping it, you know, tasteful and uh, and everything makes sense in, 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 in that regard, I don't mind discussing, you know, getting into to deeper horror or to talk about sexual themes in nature. Um...
But, uh, Ivlana, I think I, I see what you're going for, that she was already in the service of pleasing others. You know, she was already employed by a pillow house or uh, some other fanciful term that you'd like to uh, to use. Uh, and then so, and then she met someone that maybe... Maybe they became a client for a while. They had a tryst. And she thought this was actually going to go somewhere, and, and she would not be a part of that, that world anymore. And uh, he gave her this gift, and that was that. Was that. And, uh, and, you know, maybe she felt jilted afterwards. That, that's not a bad idea either, Evelyn. Chaotic Blue. Well, you know what, Chaotic? You know, you say that, and what could be more compelling for you to play this character than if you can siphon a portion of your own life experiences, emotions, or thoughts into her? Or him, if, if this was a him character. Uh, I also started work on a new class. It's a lot simpler, based around the person in, in question being infused with earth elemental magic. Big, strong tank that smacks stuff. Well, I, if you want to keep uh, if you want to keep the creations going, X Cat, as much as we can as a community, I'll you know I'll I'll give you a, a hand. I'll look at stuff as as much as I can. I'm I'm glad that it sounds like a spark has been ignited in you, X Cat, and that really makes me happy. Cake Boss, hello to you. <laughs> All right, so the question is, Ivalon, Chaotic, Diadems, anyone else out there who's been following along? It might be two sides of the same coin, but would we like to define what she does as more of an entertainer? Or, even if it's metaphorical, is she more of a gladiator? Right? Uh, because uh, the gladiator... Hey, there it is. I am not our collector, so you don't need a box. Aw, Zulerpie. Well, that's really cool of you. Thank you so much. Zulerpie, you have a, a wonderful German accent. So a gladiator is as much an entertainer as any minstrel, trained to make the arts of combat into a spectacle. I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know. Again, we can take uh, we can take things literally or metaphorically or figuratively um, into a spectacle the crowd can enjoy. This kind of flashy combat is your entertainer routine. Um, and so, is her version of uh, service more along the, the lines of an entertainer, or is she more of a gladiator? You know, maybe maybe she does do things in a a rough and tumble style. Um yes, entertainer background, coffee cat. Um in a technical sense, yes, she is an entertainer. I'm too pure for any of your stories. <laughs> Orcs make beautiful lovers. I got your rough and tumble right here. So it sounds like then, Orcs, you might want her to uh, to be more of the, the gladiator-style entertainer slash tumbler slash winky face. I like the sound of entertainer shadow broker stuff. Uh, whichever one that would fit. It could be either, X-Cat. It's just more along the lines of... Um, is she a little bit more soothing and pleasing or is she more combative and feisty about her uh, business uh, sh has she tried being a scald um, probably not as she is a druid pure as 8 year old motor oil <laughs> uh, DM says are you saying Maddie is as pure as the driven snow uh, no I guess the, the motor oil <laughs> Chaotic. I kind of like Gladiator still. Okay. Hey, you know what? She's a druid. She can shape change into some rough and tumble things. Um, and there are many people who delight in such lifestyles and services. Traditional entertainer is too bard-like in your opinion, and we have a bard, so we wouldn't have two similar professions. 
All right, so she is a, uh, a gladiator um, here. We're going to put uh, Tumblr over here. Can we vote? Well, I think you made a good point. I'm happy with it. And when this when this document becomes available on our Discord, if any of you want to go and change it, you're welcome to do so. All right. Well, I am down over half the pitcher of water, orcs. Orc is now a is a hydration orc. <laughs> all righty uh other background stuff by the way that we are going to receive acrobatics and performance which also lends a little bit of uh credence into her chosen profession she is tool uh, proficiencies with a a disguise kit And a type of musical instrument. And if we don't want it to be a musical instrument, we could have it be something else that's appropriate. Even if it's an artisan tool. Um, now, I mean, if we're going by the book, this is what we get. But if you are making this character at home... Would she maybe get proficiency in a poisoner's kit? Huh? What about a forgery kit? Huh? Huh? Something to think about. All right, equipment. She gets some kind of instrument. She gets the, uh, the favor of an admirer. And why don't we make that a trinket? Trinket number something. So someone gave her a trinket, and that is her favor that she cherishes above all else, despite it being the cause of a little bit of misery and unrequited love. Uh, a costume. What would her costume look like? And a belt pouch containing 15 gapuz. No, Chaotic, you're fine. Assert your ideas. This is a good place to step up and do so. You're fine. Does performance break down like Pathfinder, where oratory is a profession? I don't see why it couldn't. Right? If you want to if you want to make a... Pocket Punch, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that, as always. Um... Oratory could be a uh, could be a profession that you could uh, that you could take, right? If you're a public speaker, you're an announcer, you are a, you're a newsie, and you get to wear those those nice fold caps and run around the city going X three X three. But I think that's the beauty because where Pathfinder micromanages skills and tells you exactly where everything falls, this is a lot more loosey goosey. Can you can you? do something through a particular ability or skill. It doesn't have to be consistent. It doesn't have to be pigeonholed always into one thing or another, orcs. Forsaken? Yeah, go get... Uh, Forsaken, go get sleep. Feel better, man. Thank you for popping in and, and checking in with us and saying hi. Be well. Okay, now that we have this, actually, let's pop to Chapter 5 real quick. Oh, Massa Trim, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that subscription. 
It's been a good Friday night, Pocket Punch. Thank you for asking. And I hope you're having an awesome one, too. Let's find out what the gift was from the lover that she cherishes so much. Or at least former lover. Alright, we're going to roll a percentile die. Here it is. Number 27. So trinket 27, which is a shard of obsidian that always feels warm to the touch. What could that mean? Now with this revelation that this is her most cherished gift from someone that she could never have despite being able to have almost any man in Waterdeep. Or woman, for that matter. A shard of obsidian that always feels warm to the touch is her favor from an admirer. The thing she cherishes most and, and causes some pain in her heart. It was, uh, by the way, Kadic, that was an interesting exercise you did converting from Pathfinder to 5e. I hope you had fun doing that, too. Uh, you're doing good. A nice, calm day. Xcat says, can we say the person who gave her the gift died? Because unrequited love stories are a personal gripe of mine. Maybe the person's dead? Sure. Um, speaking of that idea, what if the gift was evidence? I'm, I'm open to ideas. I, th that could be a really solid one, X-Cat. DM seems to be backing you up on that. It was interesting. I really like character options in Pathfinder, but 5e is cool in its own ways, too. Easier to learn. Yes, it is, Chaotic Blue. Maybe it isn't unrequited. They dated for a while and realized it wasn't meant to be. Well, yeah, so he could have uh, he could have been a, a long-term client. Or, if not a client, um, he knew what she did for a living... Uh, but they had a, they had an actual relationship, but something happened. As X-Cat suggests, what if he was murdered? Um, and so, you know, she can't love him or something along those lines because he's dead and she's not. Kind of the opposite now, actually, as a druid. They ended up separating amicably. That could be it to uh, Numonica, or, you know, they realize, well, look, you do this for a living. I don't want that as a, you know, I don't want you in that lifestyle. That that could cause a lot of fights. Uh, I mean, people have different opinions for, um, for people who work in, you know, as escorts or, you know, in, in the adult uh, entertainment industry there. Um, you know, some of them have normal relationships where it's, look, I'm going to work and I'm going to come back. I'll bring home a paycheck. We'll eat and otherwise have a, a normal life. It's just I do this for a living. And others, uh, you know, others couldn't fathom having a partner that is in that lifestyle, even though it's just business. Lots of demony things in Waterdeep, so warm obsidian could have something demony to it. <laughs> Less drama that way. Murder would work, says Chaotic. Did she kill him? Oh. Did, did she kill him? Hmm. Now, here's another question. She is a druid circle of the moon. She is adept at taking shapes and forms. Could it have been an accident? What if, in the moment, um, 
she lost control and went a little wild with claws or something. I see her killing someone. That part, that was part of my gold digger idea. I, I'm sure she'll kill people. I, I don't think she has a problem with that. What if she had to kill him to free him from something unnatural? As a mercy. Or he was killed by his relationship with her. Ah, so because other other nobles, uh, other nobles uh, knew that she uh, maybe was... Uh, I, I, because, look, she probably makes the rounds of nobles, uh, gentry, merchants, um, you know, and the like. Uh, maybe someone killed him for that association because they didn't want him finding out. It could have even been someone in his own family who was also um, uh, approaching her for services rendered. <laughs> Fluffy Sheep says if she's evil, she could have killed him for some actual reason. So x -Cat's saying a mercy kill, like maybe he was plagued by something. It could have been an accident, an accidental, uh, an accident in some way. Um... Or, or maybe, yes, yeah, Fluffy Sheep said she killed him as part of, uh, of what was going to happen, but she actually felt bad for doing so. And she, maybe she never felt bad about killing someone before. You like Diadem's idea that someone she worked for got him killed? Yeah, there's, isn't there a lot of good ideas here, Chaotic Blue? Because you can throw a stick in any direction in Waterdeep and hit a noble. <laughs> Fluffy Sheep says maybe maybe it was a um, a Shay Tyrion situation, except it went the other way. Ooh. Interestingly enough, we have a noble uh, named uh, Noirit. Noirit Bannister, which clearly isn't Tyrion Lannister. X-Cat philosophizes us, if everyone is a noble, is anyone a noble? Deep thoughts. Deep, deep thoughts. Whew, you all have thrown out a lot of really good ideas. What? <clears throat> All right. Can, can, <laughs> Ivlon, can you give X Cat 100 EXP, please? <laughs> uh, all right. So we have a lot of possibilities here. Um, something else I would like you to think about what is the costume that she has? Now, it doesn't have to be like a, you know, a clown costume or something that's like cheap and, and like a Halloween whatever. Um, but we know who she is. What is her costume? How does she present herself? Maybe she dresses up as a, you know, she's a gnome. What if she dresses up as a poor waif and uh, goes mucking about in the lower districts? Uh, what if she dresses up as a city guard uh, to do one thing or the other? What if she... What if her costume is as a noble, even though she is not a noble? Maybe she just dresses like one and that's her costume. A red dragon themed Victorian dress. Uh, to what... Uh, so, I mean, th th so that's the, that's the costume. What would the costume do? Right? It, we can presume maybe the costume is a part of her entertainment package. Although I'm sure that's, I mean, given the nature of things, the costume isn't really the, the primary feature. Um, but like, so if that's the costume, but what is the costume doing? Why does she have it? Why does she use it? I feel like it should be related to her past, like in honor of her, of her lost love, if she lost him. So the costume maybe... Hmm. So the costume is her 
her lost lovers like a uh, uh, like a, a set of spare clothes or something. So she would actually dress up like uh, so she'd dress up like him. Like his colors if he were a noble. Oh, okay, so she actually doesn't have an old set of his clothes. But she pays homage to the family by dressing similarly to it. That's not what you meant, but sure. Well, so it, it would have been the, the second option then, right? Xcat says, I just had an image in mind of a red and black Victorian dress that had dragon stuff to it is all wouldn't fit this character. I'll yeah, yeah. That'd be fun, Xcat. <laughs> yes, homage not dressing like him. Wouldn't that... If we want to work her into the party, then, what if the person who was her former lover was was a banister? Like Noirit here. That could very well get her involved in the party, wouldn't it? Though maybe she dresses like him and becomes him in a weird way. Uh, there was a there was a King of the Hill episode where Bill became his ex because he couldn't let go. Well, you see, that I was thinking of something along those lines, right? So maybe she skulks around and pretends to be, maybe not him, but maybe someone directly as a member of the family as a page or something along those lines. I, either could work. Narik got that family member killed. X cat that that's a big accusation that that's a, a j'accuse I don't know if Santa's still around but that was that was uh perfect French all right we have we have a lot of really good ideas for her let's fill in some other Probably not as fascinating, because you're like, ah, it's a gnome, whatever. However, I think we can still do some fun stuff here, right? Our speed is 25 feet, whoop, two, not 254. 12 climb, 12 swim, 0 fly. We do have dark vision up to 60 feet. We do have gnome cunning. Advantage on all int, whiz, charisma, saving throws against magic. And we can also speak not just common, but gnomish. Oh, and uh, intelligence increases by two. Now, we, we lo let's look at a rock gnome. You have a natural inventiveness and hardiness beyond other gnomes. Most gnomes in the worlds of D&D are rock gnomes, including the Tinker Gnomes of the Dragonlance setting. Our con score goes up by one. When, uh, Artificer's Lore. Whenever you make an int history check related to magic items, alchemical objects, or technological devices, you can add twice your proficiency bonus instead of any proficiency bonus you normally apply. As well, we also are a Tinker. You have proficiency with artisan's tools. Use, using those tools, you can spend one hour and ten gapuz worth of material to construct a tiny clockwork device. The device ceases to function after 24 hours, or when you use your action to dismantle it. We can make a clockwork toy, a fire starter, or a music box. You can have up to three such devices active at a time. Since we're really getting into her as a character, using the guidelines of rock gnomes with some kind of a clockwork toy, some kind of a fire starter, some kind of a music box, which three tinker toys do you think she has given who she is and what she does? <laughs> uh, 
A music box is a good distraction. Hi, killer. Yep. Hi, killer. Um, all right. But so a music box for, and maybe she has three music boxes for all we know. So if we have a music box though, what about the music box? Don't just say it's a music box. What about the music box? Why did, why did she make the music box? What is special about it besides being a little slapped together tinker toy? Does the music box or one of her other Tinker Toys actually have this cherished possession inside of it? You know, does the piece of obsidian that always glows warmly uh, do little hammers, like play its facets to make notes? Chaotic Blue says it's their song, of course. Uh, it's fine, killer. Don't. I, I wasn't specifically uh, trying to grill you on that. You know, if we wanted to connect the characters uh, that we're creating here with uh, Noirit Bannister, uh, Noirit is saying that he's the one who came up for uh, to came up with the song "Waltz for the Mykonids." What if that was a Bannister lullaby or something? And so when she heard him singing it and saw his colors and whatnot, what if their song was "Dance" or was "Waltz of the Mykonids"? <clears throat> okay we are generating a 20th level druid that means we get all the things we're gonna get four cantrips one two three and four four three 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 Three, two, two, two. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, one, one. For spell slots. Our proficiency bonus is plus six. And we have uh, we have 20 D8 hit die by being a druid. Not D6s. Armor, light, medium, shields. Weapons, I'm just gonna put druid weapons because it's a it's a very unique list. Druid. Tools. Herbalism kit. Saving throws are intelligence and wisdom. Skills choose two from Arcana, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Nature, Perception, Religion, and Survival. Well, if she wants to read into the hearts of people, that I think that's going to be insight. And while I'd like to say perception, a part of me wants to say medicine, right? Um, medicine could apply not just to, to uh, you know, help people sniffles or to sew up a wound. Medicine might also be used for, um, for like massages. Or knowing where things are in order to manipulate in, in some form or fashion. And so medicine, like knowing the body, that's what she works with. That So to me, I think that that could be a big one for her and maybe insight then also.
if you think differently, you are welcome to throw out some alternatives. And by the way, in D&D, again, don't just think that medicine is to cure a poison or to sew a wound, uh, a wound closed. Talk to your DM. Medicine can be used for other... Right, look, it's about the body. And also, not just about the body. If, you're, uh, if you have a character uh, that has uh, proficiency in medicine, and you come across uh, someone, you know, like a very distressed child... Uh, maybe the child went through something horrific, like the, the house burned down and, you know, the the family or the pet was still inside when it happened and the kid is crying. Medicine could also be psychological services, right? I mean, you might be able to approach it with uh, a little bit of charisma, but if you want to help the child get over that trauma, why wouldn't that be medicine as a, a psychological outlet as well? Not just to paper things over with some charisma. It could be cha uh, chaotic. I would still recommend you talk to your your DM about it. But if you are if you're thinking medicine, what kind of medicine? What do we take medicine for to be healthy? Yes, of body, but also of mind. Killed that mummy dead. Diadem says. Uh, yeah, uh, DMs get some experience points. Uh, 600, uh, if a mod could get on that, please. And also, uh, DMs, speaking of which, you might be able to use medicine um, to get knowledge of certain undead. It might not always be uh, an arcana check, right? What is necromancy? It's the body, right? It's muscles and bone uh, in many instances. So you might be able to use medicine checks to... Um, to get information on undead or to help get information not just with an investigation but at a crime scene as well yeah to do an autopsy there you go chaotic uh here dms i'll get you here real quick there we go um all right We'll start with a wooden shield or any simple weapon, a scimitar or any simple melee weapon. So I don't know if she's the sword and shield type of druid. What she might have, though, is a dagger and a light crossbow. Let's try that, right? Things that are a little bit more clandestine. Oh, she can't... Oh, she's not proficient with light crossbows, is she? Not even bows. Oh, so uh, we could do a dagger and darts. Daggers and darts. How else might she administer a sleeping potion or something along those lines? If she is in need. What about a staff? Ooh, maybe a staff. There was a GameCube game, Eternal Darkness, Sandy's Requiem, where you, uh, where you at one point do that. Ah. Perform autopsies to learn about monsters? Yeah. Yeah, something along those lines, uh, X-Cat. Because, <laughs> look, especially if you are... If you're in that profession, you have to be able to keep yourself safe as well. Because, uh, especially if you're more of a, um, a gladiator performer in that regard, um, people might get a little rough and tumble back with you. And you got to be able to defend yourself. Now, her being able to turn into a bear or a fire elemental might also be uh, a good, uh, a good um, way to prevent people from, uh, from getting too rough. But uh, having some weapons handy might not be a bad idea either. Heck, when we go on break, if you look at the uh, at the tumbled wench, uh, it says, um, we put a uh, dagger in her garter belt uh, just to make sure that she stays safe, uh, even though she is a little clumsy. 
Yeah, exactly, Chaotic Blue. <laughs> uh, we'll give her some leather armor. And, I mean, leather armor, it could be just that. It could be uh, a stylistic bodice of some kind. Up to you. Uh, an Explorer's Pack and a Druidic Focus. She can also speak Druidic. Uh, we'll come back to her spell casting in a little bit here. I'm not worried about that just yet. She gets Wild Shape. Two times a day. Actually, it might be more... Actually, it's un... By this point, actually, her Wild Shape is unlimited. So, Wild Shape... Unlimited. All right, Coffee Cat, sleep well. Thank you for hanging out with us a little bit tonight. It's always nice having you around, Tricy. What do you do with these characters when they're made? Um, when we finish, I put them uh, at the end of the week. I put them over in our. Um, doo -doo -doo, here we go. Our past. It's down here. Past content, and you can watch them be made, or you can download their character sheets. But I don't personally do anything with the characters. Uh, let's see, we also get Timeless Body. Your, the primal magic you wield causes you to age more slowly. For every ten years that pass, your body ages only one year. So, I, it's not eternal youth, but it is... It's up there. And in fact, we can even go back in her time, right? She is, she, she is a young adult. She's 97, but she might not look older than... Whatever, 28, or whenever... Whenever she kind of... Reverse vampires. So instead of undead, your body just kind of mostly ceases to stop aging. And so for a good long while, she'll always look as she did in her youth. Maybe that even could have been the altercation. You know, maybe she was after some sort of power that this person had. And, uh, and she got it and her lover tried to stop her. Uh, and she ended up killing him like in the struggle for the power and she realized what good is this power if I don't have love and the only man who truly loved me I ended up killing and so maybe that obsidian is a part of her so maybe she's not necessarily a formal druid and you know she goes to the grove every Sunday for services um, what if she actually stole or inherited that power that's something to think about too Uh, should consider using them as NPCs in the weekly game. Uh, for the environment for the Tuesday game, there was a party we made when we created the Mesomasca area, and those PCs have shown up as or as NPCs. X Cat. And so here she is now. She's stuck in a timeless body, for almost ever. She will look. The way that she has since that, that fateful day. A blessing and a curse. It's good for business, but what good does that do you? You can look like you're in your 20s or 30s forever. But everyone's going to die around you. Even more than a gnome would, would suffer, right? Gnomes live to be three, 400. They're going to be used to you know being around uh, lesser lived races. But now even more so... Um, she's going to live longer than elves. She's going to lose elven friends, everyone. Let that let that sink in. Unless someone outright kills her, she is going to make friends with elves, and those elves are going to die of old age. I think that's how, how the time could dilate out for her. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, she's gonna live a long time, X Cat. I mean, sh she'll effectively be a lich, but natural, instead of undead. And Arc Druid. Uh, you can use your wild shape an unlimited number of times. Oh, after Timeless Body was also Beast Spells. Beginning at 18th level, you can cast many of your druid spells in any shape you assume using wild shape. You can perform the somatic and verbal components of a druid spell while in beast shape, but you aren't able to provide the material components. Wait a minute, did, did I just mess something up by uh, going Circle of the Moon? I think I did, because we're supposed to go through, uh... I, yeah, I'm sorry. She's not Circle of the Moon, everyone. That was me on default character creation mode, although we can entertain that. She can still shapeshift. She's just not going to be a professional shapeshifter as Circle of the Moon. Instead, I'm sorry, we're going to go Circle of Dreams or Circle of the Shepherd. Uh, so we're going to go Odds or Evens. Uh, looks like evens are dreams, odds are shepherd because of their pages. Evens. She is the circle of dreams. Maybe that's even more appropriate for what she does, huh? The infinite wild shape ability of level 20, uh, of level 20 moon druid is incredibly good, but it's not Xanathar's. But it's not in Xanathar's. You vote Shepard? Yeah, well, but we got dreams. I think she will be giving people good dreams, though. Alrighty. We have a treasured item. And maybe this is what our focus is. Let's roll a d6. Five. A rattle made from a dried gourd and holly berries. Guiding aspect, six. Uh, we're rolling a d6 and we have four. The sea is a constant churning cauldron of power and chouse. It reminds you that accepting change is necessary to sustain yourself in the world. She's in Waterdeep. She probably lives in some very nice apartments overlooking the sea. How many times could you picture this character sitting wistfully... Uh, you know, uh, uh, by the balcony, looking out over the moonlit sea, seeing it change and, and the tides roll in and out, new ships coming and going, the people down below scurrying about. If she's Circle of Dreams, she should have a Dream Eater companion. I'm not familiar with that, uh, with that creature, Evelyn. Chaotic says it's lint. I'm not sure I get that. So what's the lore behind Xanathar? How did a beholder end up writing a book? I'm glad you asked. We actually, uh, we covered that, uh, we covered that last night as we were exploring Waterdeep, X Cat. Uh, the, the, the short of it is, Xanathar is a crime boss beholder, uh, who runs a, a criminal syndicate in Waterdeep. And as for writing a book... Uh, that's probably done through magic through a mage hand or uh, an unseen servant or something. I was talking about the focus. I'm getting a little slap happy from lack of sleep. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. We can still weave this in. We can still weave this in. What if the mentor was the, the lost love in some capacity? Let's see. Four. You were one of several youngsters who were mentored by an old druid 
until one of your fellow pupils betrayed your group and, oh, maybe not, killed your master. That could have been a, uh, in some form or fashion, we could take this as a prompt and not word by word. This could still have set her on the path to accepting death and accepting killing um, and accepting the manipulation of other people and realizing that emotions do hurt and you can make and you can make them hurt in other people too what if she was the betrayer dun 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 x cat what if she was the betrayer that's true ah a uh, Muna, Musharna, or even arguably a uh, a Hypno. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, now that I'm seeing this, uh, I know what you're talking about. the the uh, the, the Japanese uh, the, the Japanese uh, monster. So yes, maybe she was the one who killed the master then. X What a twist. Maybe she loved the master and didn't want him to be around anyone else. Possibly. I don't know. We, we've been we've been entertaining a lot of different circumstances here. Um and I'm glad because this is great imagination fodder that we're that we're getting to sort through and plant our fertile seeds of of uh of uh, ideas and inspiration inside of. <sighs> All right, Circle of Dreams. Druids who are members of the Circle of Dreams hail from regions that have strong ties to the Feywild and its dreamlike realms. The druid's guardianship of the natural world makes for a natural alliance between them and good-aligned fae. These druids seek to fill the world with dreamy wonder. Their magic mends wounds and brings joy to downcast hearts, and the realms they protect are gleaming, fruitful places where dream and reality blur together and where the weary can find rest. So she is going to get, as part of her archetype... Balm of the Summer Court. At second level, you become imbued with the blessings of the Summer Court. You are a font of energy that offers respite from injuries. You have a pool of fey energy represented by a number of D6s equal to your druid level. As a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 120 feet of you and spend a number of, these di of those dice equal to half your druid level or less. Roll the spent dice and add them together. The target regains a number of hit points equal to the total. The, the target also gains one temporary hit point per die spent. You regain all expended dice when you finish a long rest. So kind of like a lay on hands. Um, so I don't know, we'll call this um, Balm of the Summer Court. D6. And we have 20 of them that we can spend. Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. At 6th level, home can be wherever you are. During a short or long rest, you can invoke the shadowy power of the gloaming court to help guard your respite. At the start of the rest, you touch a point in space and an invisible 30-foot radius sphere of magic appears, centered on that point. Total cover blocks the sphere. While within the sphere, you and your allies gain a plus five bonus to dexterity, stealth, and wisdom perception checks, and any light from open flames in a sphere, campfire, etc., isn't visible outside it. The sphere vanishes at the end of the rest or when you leave the sphere. Hidden Paths. Starting at 10th level, you can use the hidden magical. Oh! So she can, 
She brings clients into her own magical realm. In fact, depending on, you know, the proclivities, you could be in the middle of the street and this is happening and no one will know the wiser. Bit of an exhibition, huh? Starting at 10th level, you can use the hidden magical pathways that some fae use to traverse space in the blink of an eye. As a bonus action on your turn, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Alternatively, you can use your action to teleport one willing creature you chose. You, uh, um, you can, t uh, I'm sorry. Alternatively, you can use your action to teleport one willing creature you touch up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier minimum once, and you regain all expended uses after a long rest. So, hidden paths, uh, times, whatever, depending, uh, wisdom modifier is probably going to be maxed out, so we're going to probably make that five. And lastly, we get Walker in Dreams. At 14th level, the magic of the Feywild grants you the ability to travel mentally or physically through the Dreamlands. When you finish a short rest, you can cast one of the following spells without expending a spell slot or requiring material components. Dream, with you as the messenger. Scrying or Teleportation Circle. This use of Teleportation Circle is special. Rather than opening a portal to a permanent teleportation circle, it opens a portal to the last location where you finished a long rest on your current plane of existence. If you haven't taken a long rest on your current plane, the spell fails but isn't wasted. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a, a long rest. So she might actually have several apartments that she goes to uh, depending on the evening's uh, business. And she'll stay in each of these different locations. So if she has to get out of there, or she has to move, or even she needs to meet someone in a hurry, she has this floating teleportation point somewhere in the city of Waterdeep. Uh, X-Cat says uh, she killed him to gain the power. Either he was the lover, or the lover was one of the other students, and he got in the way. But she felt horrible about it afterwards. Oh, yeah, it could have been another student. So they were, you know, they were passing notes to each other in class and things happen. I like the idea. Uh, oh, and maybe, so maybe the lover was chosen over her to, I don't know, graduate or something. And yeah, she went all yandere on him. Uh, I like the idea that the lover was another student more than it being a teacher. <laughs> Chaotic, right? <laughs> student would be less cliche. So yeah, uh, no offense. Both are okay, though. Um, student makes more sense. Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, there you go. I'm digging it. Hopefully others out there are, are liking that train of thought, too. And, uh, Dark Wolf, if you're out there, here's an extremely adorable picture for you, huh? There we go. A woo. Or weather a woof, bork bork. All right. By the way, if if you have ideas for her other two gadgets, they could be other music boxes or something similar. Uh, feel free to throw out what her trinkets are. Or her little tinker toys that she's made. All right. Now, we have a lot of fluff and a lot of flavor to this character. Let's drop in her stats and increase them from there. Wisdom, I think, is going to be her highest. I think she's really going to be high mental stats, low physical stats. Suddenly she's an arsonist now, <laughs> or she has an arsonist streak. <laughs> I don't know if arson is necessarily her thing, 
Um, uh, you can give her a fire starter of some kind, but if that's the case, what does it look like? Or how does it function? Or maybe she just uses it to light candles for the mood. Or incense for meditation or relaxation. So I'm kind of thinking wisdom is highest. Yeah, there you go, Chaotic. Exactly. Flint that has a mechanism for sparking it rather than having to do it by hand. <laughs> Chaotic. You're fine. Don't worry. You're good still. Alright, so Constitution goes to 11. Int goes up to 15 also. And... There we go. Now we need to give her 10 points in her various skills because we did not roll for feats. <laughs> that being said, we had one character that featured some racial feats. And for the for our last character we'll make after this, I'm going to artificially give at least one racial feat. If we don't get it naturally as it is. Um, all right. Wisdom. Well, we can drop five points of our ten into Wisdom and pump her up to twenty. So this would be six. Seven. Eight, nine. And then we have one last point. Uh, ten. Wait, did, did I mess that up? I think I think I messed something up. Hang on. I'm going to redo this. Intelligence was floating a 2. Con was floating a 1. We put 15, 14, or no, 14. No, that was 13. 15, 14, 13. 12, 10, 8. That pops to 11. That pops to a 16. We've now used 5 of our 10 points to bring her to 20. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six. Seven, eight, and then we get two more. We get two more. Probably Charisma? I don't know. Maybe she holds her own and we put her two more in Dex. And that's 910. Plus, it, it'll improve her acrobatics as well. Alright, so there's our 10 points. If you think it should be different, let me know. But this is... So she's smart as a generalist. She doesn't have a specialty in a in an, uh, a knowledge, but she does know decently about a lot of things. She's very wise, and she has a very high charisma as well. And I think those are important skills for her to have. X cat, you think so too? Okay. So then we're gonna go and fill that in. Minus one, two, zero, three, five, and three. With that, uh, minus one strength, minus one athletics. I should say save. Two for everything except acrobatics, which is an eight. Con is zero. Int is nine. And everything else are going to be threes. 
Wisdom is 11, which is going to be the same for Insight and Medicine. And 5 for everything else. It's pretty good. Giving her Passive Perception to be a 15. Or 145. She's very observant, everyone. Her char Charisma. 3, 3, 3, 3. And Performance is a 9. Her initiative is going to be a plus two, because that is a dex check. Armor class, if she's wearing her leather armor, whatever you envision it to be, that's 11 plus dex, so that's 13. Hit points. At level one, she gets all eight from her, uh, her first hit die. For all 19 other levels, she's going to get half plus one. So 19 times five. And then for all levels, 20 times zero, because you get bonus hit points equal to your, your constitution modifier. That's going to be easy, though, right? That's going to be zero. This is going to be 95. Plus eight is 103. By the way, how does a character get passive insight? Is that a feat or something? No, uh, passive insight... Passives are kind of an optional thing. In 4th edition, actually, you had Passive Perception and Insight. In 5th edition, it does put Passive Perception on the character sheet, but it's just sort of implied that you have it. As well, I mean, your DM will probably, probably allow it, but uh, your character can presume to have Passive Perception, Passive Insight, and Passive Investigation. Passive Investigation is directly stated... In the player's handbook under feats. Though feats are optional depending on your DM. You feel like she's sort of a, a Pater Baelish type? Diadems uh, to Derek. Honey whiskey and soda is quite nice. Um, which is apparently what my boyfriend is playing is Legend of the Five Rings tonight. Ah. Well, you know, Chaotic, so by the time she gets to 20, I mean, she may very well have pillow houses herself. She may not be just a, a single agent. I mean, she'll probably take select jobs. But she might have uh, some guys and girls working under her. I mean, no pun intended. Some guys and girls working under her as well. Um, as part of her, her business that she's set up. All right, with the weapons, if she ever uses them, I don't know, she's quite an accomplished spellcaster. Um, these are both weapons that can use dexterity, so this is going to be a plus eight to hit for both of them. Daggers are 1d4, in this case, plus two extra damage from dex, and they can be thrown. Darts are also 1d4, plus two, and piercing, which can be thrown even further than a dagger. Ammo, I, if, if you want to put down here, if she has 10 darts on her, uh, you could put dart, uh, dart, and then 10, and she's used zero of them, that kind of a thing. That pun intends itself. I don't know if I understand, X-Cat. Chaotic says those houses have to be fronts for something. Maybe to do with uh, the Gem Cutting Thieves Guild? She could also be an agent of Xanathar as well. That's a very good observation, Chaotic Blue. X-Cat, would you like to roll up a Nullmancer Warrior uh, at some point? Yeah, we can... Uh, we can. Um, I think we'll take a look at it in the workshop. And... Uh, in go over its its concept and then we can we can play around with it from there xcat spell ability spell ability is wisdom our attack is going to be a plus 11 as its proficiency plus modifier then our save dc is going to be a 19 because you simply add 8 to your attack modifier and that's how difficult it is to resist the effects of your spells. 
Now, I shall also say by this point, she probably doesn't have just basic leather armor. Maybe, but if you're 20th level and your DM does allow magic items, which are optional in 5th ed, you don't have to have them. 4th edition, you did. And if you didn't want to play with it, you ran with intrinsic bonuses. 5th edition, they are optional. And also, everyone, she has earned a name. All right, nothing new for spell lists. So a druid, much like a cleric and a paladin, technically know every spell that they have available to them. Because when they wake up, they'll pray for them or commune with nature and receive the spells based on what they ask for for that day. And so you are going to know a number of spells equal to or you can prepare, not no. You can prepare a number of spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your druid level. So here, uh, spell, come on. Spells prepared equals 25. Four, three, 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 three. Two, two, one, one. And you'll notice that on this sheet, you see how it only allows for the, the one or the twos over here? It's very convenient. And for any of the spells that you have, you see how you can fill in the dots depending on, on what's necessary for the spells? And you get nice little reminders like this about the, the shapes of things and going from there. So when she wakes up on any given day, she can consult the sea. Uh, she can, I don't know, talk to a plant or an animal or something and ask for ask for these primal uh, miracles to occur. It's up to you. If she gets 25. If you want 10 of them to be level 1 spells, then distribute the remaining 15 however you'd like. She doesn't have a domain similar to the Circle of the Land. So you get your 25 different spells, and there you go. You split it up uh, however you'd like. And if she has a companion similar to what Ivalon said, maybe she cast Animal Friendship on someone. Uh, maybe she has, um, maybe she does have a Dream Eater style monster that I'm sure we could reflavor in some way. Um, but this sheet is nice because you can get a, uh, an animal companion. What if she also sells plants and gifts them to people to make the Druidic Network a plant she can talk to? Yeah, speak with plants, especially if you can manipulate it and you can put plants in key areas. You can get a lot of use out of that spell. Instead of just having, well, the forest is 10 miles away and whoever randomly walks past it. That's not a bad idea, X-Cat. So maybe she does have plants. <laughs> she has plants in a lot of different places. Because she knows that while a plant can only remember information 24 hours prior to when you ask the question, um, she might be able to get a lot of information from around town. That's a very good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea, X-Cat. Yeah, planting a bug. Or a mole. <laughs> that's a dead cloaker, says Diadems. Yeah, you don't see cloakers that often. You have a nice new cape now.
There's an epic encounter plus a little change. So we just need a name, and I think we can button up this character, everyone. What would you like to name her? You said Donkey. We, we can call her Donkey. Donka. Early on in my group's campaign, we encountered some quicklings on our travels, but one nat one so bad it killed itself when it tried to attack my friend. Would it, like, overshoot your location and splat into a window or a wall or something? Well, I'll tell you what, you all think of a name, why don't we take a 10 minute break, use the restroom if you have to, get a snack or a drink, and uh, we'll come back and we'll finish the party with our fifth character. Um, Ivlon did bring up that there are some options that are, uh, that are also a part of Xanathar's Guide, and so maybe we can take a look, after we have our party uh, made, we can take a look at those options and go through and add an even greater layer of depth to them. Uh, than even what we've explored. Uh, did someone sponsor a box earlier or donate? Uh, Zuler Pie did donate, but uh, Zuler Pie uh, declined to open any boxes. Elena de Moira? Elena de Moira for the gnome druid's name. Hey, hey, Katie Sue, and uh, welcome. You actually caught us right after we made an, a very intriguing character. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to, uh, I'll make sure to, to go over the, uh, the, the character here. You gotta decompress after D&D, &D, but you'll be back? Yeah, please do. We're gonna take a ten minute break, Katie Sue, and when we come back, we're gonna start our last character for this week's Waterdeep campaign. Oh, Tyranny is your bread and butter, so Derek is gonna sponsor a box, and we'll take care of that real quick then. Um, so, X-Cat, uh, you, you think that uh, Elena de Moira is our rock gnome's name. <laughs> DM says I knew you'd come around. Alrighty. Well then, let's pop open a box for Derek. I have one more uh, Tyranny of Dragons box left. Until maybe Wednesday, if I can get more in. <laughs> I'm weak. My only weakness is being weak. <laughs> yeah, bullets. How did you know my one weakness? <laughs> Alrighty. Derek, my friend. 
you have some choices to make. In my humble opinion, we are going to start out with a Svirfneblin fighter. So if you have ever wanted a deep gnome that can stick you with a pointy end, there it is. It's not focusing, but I promise. Ah, eh, whatever. It's up there. It's blending in. After that, uh, we're immediately jumping into the uncommons with an active camo wood elf druid. Derek, next up, should you choose it, you also have, and if, if we can get a little hype here, you can choose a copper dragon. A copper dragon. Or, if you don't want a copper dragon, Derek... You can instead have a half black dragon lord. A half black dragon lord. Gotta go with the Dragon Lord. Gotcha, Derek. And the final box of Tyranny of Dragons rests. Yeah, exactly, Derek. DMs, yeah, DMs, you probably would have taken that one too. I think you already have a copper too, so. Or no, was that? I think it was D&D &D time that took the uh, the copper. <sighs> All righty. Well, everyone, Let's take a 10 minute break and we'll we'll be back to see what happens next, right? <laughs> 